unprecedented offseason, and Miami stands in the midst of trade rumors. Still, that positive signals can still be realized, this is too a time. And the Miami Dolphins stock up on offensive weapons. Additionally, one of the Miami Dolphins' top offensive coordinator candidates is being disputed by the Seahawks. If the Miami Dolphins is not assertive, they will lose this delicious commodity. Please subscribe and ring the bell before we fly into Dolphin space. Ken Dorsey, whom Dolphins is pursuing, aims to add to the offensive coordinator position after Chan Gailey's resignation has shown his goodwill. Immediately after Buffalo Bills's defeat to the Chiefs, Ken Dorsey followed Miami Dolphins on Twitter. Having said that, I'm not sure this is his official account. However, this did not happen naturally, especially after the Bills fell. And the difficult situation with not only Ken Dozy, but also DC Frazier, made the fans feel confident. Following Buffalo's 38-24 AFC Championship loss to the Kansas City Chiefs, the Bills' attention will turn to potentially having to replace coaches who leave for promotions elsewhere. Two Bills coaches who could leave the team now that they have been eliminated from the playoffs are defensive coordinator Leslie Frazier and quarterbacks coach Ken Dorsey. Frazier has already been interviewed once by the Houston Texans for their head coaching job. The team has requested a second interview as of Monday afternoon. Buffalo's defense was shredded on Sunday night, but Frazier has done a terrific job coaching the unit for the past four seasons. Cornerback Tradavius White credited Frazier for his work developing players and said he would endorse Frazier to Houston. I'll be an endorsee of him for a head coaching job, White told the media. If Frazier were to go, there is a good chance he would take a few Bills assistants along with him. Another coach drawing interest around the league is quarterbacks coach Ken Dorsey. Is quarterbacks coach Ken Dorsey. Following Josh Allen's breakout season, teams are interested in looking at Dorsey as a potential offensive coordinator in the league. The Detroit Lions showed interest in Dorsey before hiring Anthony Lynn for the role. Although that spot has been filled, Adam Schefter reported that the Seattle Seahawks are interested in interviewing Dorsey for their offensive coordinator vacancy. The Miami Dolphins have also been linked to Dorsey, but no official report has come out on the team wanting to interview Buffalo's quarterback coach. Miami recently hired Charlie Fry to be their quarterback's coach. Fry was teammates with Dorsey on the Cleveland Browns, 2006-2007. Miami Dolphins is having calculations behind this deal. Waiting for a candidate is something the fans have realized. But right now, the season of the Bills is over. Miami Dolphins needs faster if they want Dorsey. Second, Tua Tungavailoa's time? That cannot be denied anymore. One of the absolute certainties of the 2021 NFL offseason is that we need to expect the unexpected, especially as it pertains to the quarterback position. Across the league, we're seeing a continued changing of the guard, old faces springing up in new places or otherwise riding off into the sunset. Philip Rivers. Retired. Drew Brees. Destined for a similar fate. Matt Ryan. Potentially on the trade block. Matthew Stafford. Officially on the trade block. Aaron Rodgers. He teased last night after the Packers lost to Tampa Bay that his future in Green Bay is uncertain this offseason despite being under contract for 2021. Plus teams like New Orleans, New England, San Francisco, Carolina, Pittsburgh, Indianapolis and others needing long-term solutions at the most important position in sports. And all of this doesn't even touch on the Sam Darnolds of the world, who is clearly fizzy to his expectations in New York. Or Deshaun Watson, the top five quarterback who is pondering whether or not to formally request a trade from the Texans franchise. Needless to say, it is simultaneously a good and bad year to need a quarterback. The chaos will be plentiful. And even teams who don't need a quarterback, such as the Miami Dolphins, will be caught up in the crossfire. How? No, not by tending to rumors of Deshaun Watson in Miami, although if the possibility materialized the Dolphins would be doing themselves an injustice to at least not explore the possibility but rather by how changing quarterbacks can influence the demand of Miami's number 3 overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft. As things currently stand, the Dolphins have a highly coveted selection, the Jaguars and Jets are expected to draft quarterbacks with the first two selections, which gives Miami the last call of a top-flight quarterback prospect unless you're a subscriber of Trey Lance of North Dakota, North Dakota State.
But what happens if Deshaun Watson lands in Carolina and San Francisco acquires Matthew Stafford? That would leave Detroit comfortably in striking distance at number 7 to secure a quarterback, even if it is QB4 and the Falcons strike for QB3 at number 4 overall. Perhaps Denver could save the day for Miami's hopes of a potential big payout at number 3, but the larger overall hurdle is that these moving pieces will threaten the Dolphins' market value of the number 3. So right now, Dolphins are urgently equipped with many new weapons. It's true to their commitment to Tua Tungavailoa. And if you still don't believe, let me talk a little bit about the past, it's not far away from today. Last year, Miami Dolphins fans were waiting to see their future with Tua Tungavailoa. After a great Alabama football career, Tua became the second quarterback drafted in the 2020 NFL Draft. The Dolphins are now already considering moving the first-round pick, and that might be a little premature. Miami was just one win away from making the NFL playoffs last year, but their offense struggled. They failed to consistently push the ball down the field, and some of their best moments were with Ryan Fitzpatrick under center. Still, they cannot open the playoffs' door. But, there are plenty of reasons why they should stick with Tua. Let's start with what Tua was facing this year. He came off of a devastating hip injury that many believed off of a devastating hip injury that many believed would cost him his rookie season. He also had a limited offseason with the Dolphins due to COVID-19. Even with this adversity, Tua Tungavailoa went 6-3 as a starter in his rookie season. Tua also got minimal help from his weapons this year. His offensive line crumbled frequently. The running game was inconsistent, and all of their receivers had bad drops on quality passes by Tua. As of right now, Miami has three options. They can either stick with Tua, draft his replacement or trade for Deshaun Watson. Drafting a quarterback is a non-starter. Outside of Trevor Lawrence, no quarterback in this class compares to Tua Tungavailoa. There are more pressing needs on this team than quarterback, and drafting Tua's replacement would be a waste of the asset. While some Miami Dolphins fans will want the team to trade for Watson, the asking price will be massive. Miami would likely have to get assets to land him. Doing this would keep the Dolphins from bolstering the rest of the roster, and they would be paying Watson considerably more. Without a better offensive line or receiving core, the Dolphins will still be limited as a team. Because of this, their best option is to build around Tua. Let him prove himself with a quality offense around him. With so many draft picks, the Dolphins could add some of Tua's former teammates with Alabama football. Pairing him with Devona Smith and Najee Harris would give him some of the best weapons in this class, and Alex Leatherwood would be an asset on the offensive line. To further dig into the Miami Dolphins' hole in the offensive line, the Dolphins' first winning record since 2016 came predominantly thanks to a staunch defensive effort that ultimately fell short due to injuries by the end of the year, with the offense largely playing a supporting role throughout the season. This was to be expected, with the Dolphins losing the talents of Albert Wilson and Alan Hearns due to opt-outs and the team's decision to transition to rookie quarterback Tua Tungavailoa after their Week 7 bye. With Tungavailoa at the helm, Brian Flores' team showed flashes of what they could become and changes are already being made to the coaching side of the game, giving their young gunslinger a chance to grow ahead of what is expected to be his first full season as the starter. But while coaching will make a huge difference to the former Alabama Crimson Tide quarterback's development, the inescapable fact that the Dolphins need some serious weapons to support him still lingers. With Hearns and Wilson gone, the Dolphins relied heavily on Devontae Vontae Parker to lead the way, with the likes of Jakeem Grant and Isaiah Ford some of their best depth options. Miles Gaskin had an impressive year in the backfield and Mike Jasicki continues to show that he is the guy at the tight end position and needs to have the ball thrown to him more often, posting 703 receiving yards and 6 receiving touchdowns with a catch rating of 62.4%. But it's not enough to expect the team to make progress in Flores' third year if new faces are not brought in to give the Dolphins some legitimate threats across the offense, particularly at wide receiver and running back. The Dolphins are regularly linked with two players with their third overall pick in the draft, Alabama receiver Devona Smith and Oregon Ducks tackle Penny Sewell. 
solidifying the offensive line is an absolute must for the Dolphins, so Sewell makes the most sense at that spot if he is available, but landing a player such as Smith would be an excellent step forwards in stockpiling talented offensive players. The Dolphins have four picks in the first two rounds and all four of them should be used on offensive players, including both skill positions such as receiver and running back as well as along the trenches, with excellent growth already shown from rookie linemen Austin Jackson, Solomon Kindley and Robert Hunt. Giving Tungavailoa a wider range of targets in the passing game, as well as a solid 1-2 punch in the backfield and strengthened protection should allow him to sit more comfortably in the pocket and make the kind of plays seen during his college days. The Dolphins can use some of their mid to late round picks on the defensive side of the ball, but the first two rounds should be dedicated to truly adding impact players to the offense that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Bills. Along with O.C. Ken Dorsey of the new champions of the AFC East, the Buffalo Bills. The future of Tua Tungavailoa, I believe, will become bright. He will be a legend of the Miami Dolphins.